Hi everyone, welcome to the Ecclesia Talk Show. I am Adesola and I'll be your host. So today we're going to be talking about some topics around marriage and love. And today I have a guest with me, Sir. Welcome to have you on board. Could you please Thank introduce you so yourself much. to us? My name is Pastor Herrick Tyro Bemegu. Welcome, Pastor yeah, thank you. Tyro. Yeah. So, we saw a video online recently and we just thought to talk about it and some other topics, right? So, let's watch the video together. What is the scriptural relevance of a wedding ring? It has no scriptural relevance, including my own. <laughs> All these are my wedding rings. I'm 30 something years married and my wife gave me rings to mark certain milestones of our marriage so that's why we have two rings now marriage is not Christian there is no Christian marriage <laughs> marriage is culture culture that's why whether you marry in the mosque in the church in the village in the shrine marriage is marriage no Christian marriage but there are Christians in marriage so that's why the Bible doesn't have a scripture on wedding because wedding is traditional marriage for white people but we Africans the way we are after we do our own traditional marriage we now carry white people traditional marriage and attach so we do two traditional marriages Do you understand? Please, if you understand, say, I hear you. It's not necessary. I did it because I didn't know better. If it's now, I won't do it. Because it's a waste of money. That money you used to feed people could have started a business for your wife. Then after feeding people, you come and be hungry. In our church back home, I join weddings in my office. Me, two, three pastors, guy, lady, father of man, father of woman, two or three friends, marriage is over. They come to church on Sunday, praise the Lord. We had a wedding within the week. Papa was there, he blessed our marriage. We just want to announce ourselves and thank you for your support. Praise the Lord. They go to their seat, marriage is over. So, sir, if you observe in that video, it mentioned a few things that I would love us to discuss. So, it said there is no scriptural relevance to ring, like I mean, wedding ring. And you know, it said there's not, it doesn't really symbolize anything spiritual like that. So, like, what are your thoughts about that? What are your thoughts about that? Uh, when you talk about scriptural, the message or words concerning rings. That means it's dealing with Christian uh, marriage. Understand? Not outside that, because outside that they have a purpose of doing it. Mm -hmm. But in this kingdom, at least in God's kingdom, marriage, if we study the book of Genesis, we we'll see there something happens that it call our attention to the importance and the symbol that is represent. It means authority. After the interpretation of the dream of Pharaoh, Pharaoh removed his ring mm -hmm. and gave it to okay. Joseph as a symbol of authority. Okay. And when you look at the book of Luke, chapter 15, the prodigal son immediately returns. His father says, You change his raiment. And it gave him authority that the ring. So for the church, it is nothing. But when you see a brother with a ring or a sister with a ring in marriage, it symbolizes that for the woman, I have authority hmm. okay. on me. Okay. And we see a man with a red ring, it shows that I am also bound with woman. It's a symbol of authority of union. But Scripturally, 
there is nothing like that. So it's not really like it was mentioned verbatim in the scripture that you should use rings or your wedding you know, to make sure that everything is sealed. Not like I think I get it now that ring originally symbolizes something that um maybe authority yes. and I think they brought that concept. A symbol into, of union. A symbol of union. That's yes. what they brought the idea into marriage. Yes. Thank you so much for that perspective. And I think he mentioned something else that I also want to hear your thoughts about them. So enlighten us about. He said, there is nothing like Christian marriage. But then when he said that, I listened to the very head, we listened to it together, and he said, he was interchangeably using the word marriage and wedding. So I just wanted to help us put perspective to what he said. I mean, maybe if you have some things to say about like, is there anything like Christian marriage or Christian wedding and all of that? So let's have you, sir. Thank you. If we listen to that video very well, Pastor was using the word marriage and wedding interchangeably. Yes, I saw that too. I yes. observed that. In a circular world, they have their own marriage. Mm -hmm. And if you ask me that, don't think there's, there's nothing like Christian marriage. I will ask the person, do we have anything like Christian school? Mm. You understand? Okay. There is it's not the atmosphere that makes us something. It is what we do with the atmosphere. Mm. So when two Christians meet themselves in marriage, it becomes the, the marriage becomes Christian marriage. Because there are rules and regulations mm. that govern the union. Mm. So for us, because according to First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 4 downward, when you get to 7, Paul said, marriage is a gift of God. Mm -hmm. He says some are given this gift, while some are given the gift to be single. <laughs> okay, so if it is a gift of God, there is a way. There is nothing comes from God without purpose. Mm. You understand? So when two Christians find themselves in union and it comes to an agreement, okay. God himself will honor your agreement. Mm. So the whole idea is that there's actually something called Christian marriage. Yes. Maybe his own perspective is just that People attending wedding and doing it in church and thinking that that's what make, that's what makes the marriage Christian and all of that. Okay. So I think I really get that your perspective that marriage should be done God's way because it's actually ordained by God and yes. that's that's what really brought about the idea of Christian marriages and all of that. Thank you so much for that perspective, sir. I really Very do cool. appreciate. Very cool. So I also have a final question on that video. He said. It's not really necessary to do white wedding because it's a waste of money. <laughs> so, like, I just, I felt like a lot of people that have money and all of that, like, white wedding. So, I don't know, but I just want to hear you about mental There is a lot of prayer in society today, and these concepts are lead to a higher rate of immorality. Hmm. Because when the people see the weight of the huge responsibility on them, it denies them of the purpose of the of the of the of the of relationship hmm. paul told us if a man cannot longer con uh, control himself he should go and marry hmm. but today you see a man that cannot control himself but he wanted to marry but the responsibility outside is too much hmm. and such person you end up seeing many of them cohabiting hmm. some going to all kind of immorality so we have to understand that there's nothing called white marriage in christendom hmm. When you are set to marry with the both, number one, you have two parents on you, the spiritual parent and your biological parent. Okay. Both of them have to be aware. Mm. Their concept is what matters. Mm. Others' opinions, others, they are, they are not necessary. Mm. So why are you wasting money on, on unnecessary thing? If you have the money you can waste, you can waste it. But you want to understand that everything you receive from God is to be shining to a purpose. Mm. If after Jesus Christ felt 5,000, it instructed them to pass the remnant. Mm. So there is no waste in this kingdom. Mm. So there is nothing like called white uh, marriage. After the blessing of the concept of the pastors and the, uh, your mm -hmm. and your biological parent, it is done. Thank you so, so much. So that's an unnecessary thing. Thank you so much for that, sir. So like, the idea is that don't waste money. If you, if you don't have the money, what you need to make your marriage successful is not necessarily the people eating rice and all of that. So don't be pressured, as I said. If you have the money, quiet. But then remember that 
money is supposed to be channeled right okay so that's that now that brings me to another question i have for you now this is not related to the video it's just something that we're talking about since it's the season of love as everybody claimed so i have a question some questions right but one of it is is the will of god a person i mean is the will of god like in marriage just one person i mean once you i know people say something like my will of god my will of god and all that the will of god for me is it just one person the will of you, god is not for the too. will of god is not for just one person mm. that's not like one person if the person died that means you have lost the will of god for that <laughs> There are many uh, that got married to so-called the will of God after the the the, the, spy, the opposite uh, partner died. So do you still, do you remain single? So that means the other person that you marry is not the will of God. The will of God is not one. The will of God is not one. It's I get that. Yes. I get that. I get that. So you marry so... based on your knowledge. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> you marry based on your knowledge. Could you please just like expand on that? Wow, okay, so in Romans chapter 12 told us there is a good, acceptable, and a perfect will of God. Mm. Hallelujah. We have to understand one thing that the size of your knowledge determines the size of your option. You can never make yes. When I go to a boutique and I see the different kind of light, that does not give me the good uh, proof of the color. Mm. When I expose to that's another light, that one is genuine. That. The light has covered you. He has cow yes. Color. So hmm. that is why he says some people after they married came to the will of God. After they got married, after three years, they're fighting for divorce. Hmm. Why? It was the light of your option that happened. Hmm. It is a cockroach in your combat. It was that was your light you are seeing that time. Yep. But when you expose it to, uh, to accurate light, the light of the gospel, you have the right choice. So I get your perspective now. So why it's not necessary that God has one person for us? God can actually direct you by light to know like the right choice to make he can guide you right and it does not necessarily mean that he has one person in mind so you, you just mentioned that like exposing yourself to the light of the gospel actually channels your your uh, your options and your choice so like thank you so much for that i really really do appreciate thank you. my single people i hope they learn so like up to the next question that i have for you i said what is more needed in choosing a partner is it who your pastor or your prophet or even your parent sees or see rather or who you see or who you want for yourself you know so people in there i know i think people are actually like very zealous now they just want to marry the will of god they want to do things the right way and they believe that they can't see enough i mean once their pastor says this is the person i feel you should marry you feel like i should go for it Many people are still being, um, that the, the decisions are still being altered by the pastors and prophets. Like, what do you have to say about that? This concept of marriage is very, very pure. You understand? If you understand the gospel, mm -hmm. I always say, marry yourself. Yes, the word marry yourself means marry someone you see yourself in. Marry yourself. What do you say to yourself? Yes. Marry because yourself. God did not take any external resources to make a woman. He took it from the man. People are looking for people that are better than them. My brothers, can you hear? People, Marry are, looking, people are looking for people that are better than them. It's not. Mm -hmm. When you began to see your expression in someone, it is a wisdom that this person is a, is a person. That is. So hey. your pastors can only guide you. Because the responsibility of the pastor is to feed the disciples or the flocks with knowledge. Hmm. When he gives you the knowledge, you are applying the knowledge to choose the right person. The pastor is not authorized to choose for you. Not if you're a biological father. Nobody, not even a prophet. He can only give you wisdom. When he gives you the raw materials, you choose the material. Come on, God gives uh, you raw material. Yes. Yeah. So when but you just make sure so you say it, is, it is not the pastor that has the will, the autonomy to choose for you. Mm. It gives you the wisdom. And if you are properly taught, you will know the right person. Mm. You don't need to look for vision. You don't need to look for revelation. You don't need to hear audible voice. Those things are not needed. Mm. For God can never choose for you. Mm. He said, I knock. It's your choice to open. Mm. If it is your choice, then marriage also is a choice.
Okay. Because you can't just, after you have and do it roughly, and you are blaming God. Yes. That is the person that you choose for me. Actually, remember Adam and Eve. Yes. When Eve ate the fruit, and Adam was like, was not like, it was the woman you gave to me. Yeah. About God, it's all blame. My yes. people, let's <laughs> we go through. So, so like, thank you so much for that. I mean, I really got some things. You you said that while it is not that God really chooses one person for you. It can actually guide you. I mean, people actually want to marry the will of God. They want to do things the God way. But if they just feel like God will just say, Sister Precious in the church, it's your wife. They just want God to say that. But then, I feel you have put a scriptural perspective to this thing. God gives you light. You make decision based on that. So, like, your de the decision is still yours to make, right? Thank you so much for that. Finally, before we close this session, before we end it, okay. I have a question and I just feel I should ask, what is your best advice for singles and intending couples like us? Don't look at me. I'm intending couple. My advice is that married the person you see in you. If you are not a best person yeah. for yourself, then don't look for the people, someone that is that can fit into that situation. If you're a liar, there's no way. If God gives you someone that is trustworthy, you will still be looking for another thing else. So, before you look for a woman, look for the God of the woman. Before, before, you, before you, look you look for, for a, a woman, before you look for a look brother, for the God of the woman. Before you look for husband, look at the, the look, find the God of the husband, because the word husband does not means is a partner; it means head. Which means? Ed is not your mate mm. in a relationship. Husband is not a mate. It's a spiritual earth for you. Mm. So for a woman to look for husband, you have to look for head, not the partner mm. or sexual partner. Mm. Many people, they marry the sexual partner because it, sat it satisfies your odd. Now, mm. spirituality, the man is empty. Is it too? So you, you know you're in problem. So that's why I said you walk upon yourself. When you walk upon yourself, look for another person like yourself. You won't have any problem. If you're a liar, look for a liar. If you're a liar, please look for a liar. So if you are if you're a saint, then you qualify to marry a saint. Because in your light, you see light. That is it. If you're a liar, you will marry a liar. Mm. If you are a saint, you will marry a saint. You know, so the idea is that you attract who you Ah, ah yes. So like I think I hope you get that. Yes. Not like we are saying should be like you get. <laughs> so like thank you so much You're for welcome. that. I really do appreciate your thoughts and your opinions. You literally explained these things in the simplest form. So glad to have you on board. Thank you so much. Thank you. So everyone, this is where we're gonna be ending this session. And I really hope you find this very enlightening. Thank you so much for staying with us. Stay tuned for more interesting and enlightening episodes on this show. This is the Ecclesia Talk Show. So if you have questions and comments or contributions to make to this episode, put it down in the comment section below. Like our channel and subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much. See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>